everybody, welcome to Comic Book Club. I'm Justin. I am Pete. We are here to talk some comics. Yeah, uh, how about that? We haven't that? seen you in a while. So uh, we've only gotten better dressed, uh, except for Pete, who's only gotten worse dressed. Keeping it real. Uh, we have three comics to talk about. We have Avenging, Avenging Spider-Man number one, Unwritten number 31, and Batwoman number three, part of the new DC Universe New 52. Let's kick it off with Avenging Spider-Man number one, uh, sort of a new tentpole comic from Marvel. Uh, yeah, that's a camping term. Uh, so it's sort of strange. The promo why, promotion. Explain why it's a tentpole. Uh, because it's an out of continuity sort of uh, book that anyone can just pick up. But, but why would that have anything to do with the tent? Or because they've been promoting the book uh, a great so deal. So they're raising a. If the Marvel Universe is a tent, this is one of the poles that is holding it up. Really? This comic is holding Marvel up? This is a comic that they're making a big push for, I believe, because they <clears throat> want this comic to be out there. It's a, a, a major character, Spider-Man, uh, with Team Up. I'm just saying, if I'm going camping, I don't think a comic book is really... You're getting a little caught up in the analogy. I mean, maybe it's the canteen that to Marvel's field trip? Tentpole is a term that people just use. It oh. doesn't have to be... Uh, okay. You don't have to assign So I, I shouldn't think about the fact that it's used incorrectly in this. It is used correctly. Uh, uh, it's just there's no like, oh, this comic is the canteen of the Marvel Universe. <laughs> no one says that. <laughs> uh, They're going to start saying it. Yeah. Well, careful. Whoa. That was uh, an earthquake. Uh, smile earthquake. So Avenging Spider-Man... Uh, is everybody no, all right? <laughs> what was that? I don't know. You're losing your okay. focus. Um this comic, Spider-Man teams up with another major character from the Marvel Universe. In this issue, it's the Red Hulk. Um, this is a fun team-up. It is a fun team-up. I didn't think this would be a fun team-up. It was. A, uh, it's cool. I'm very excited. I feel like this was a, a solid number one issue. Yeah. A lot of fun twists and turns. Art's fantastic. Uh, when I first saw this, I was like, what? But now I'm completely on board. Marvel's been pushing this book uh, a lot with the, all the back cover ads. Uh, yeah. Zeb Wells, it gets great, annoying. It gets a little annoying. That's why I was a little dubious of it. Uh, but Zeb Wells, great Spider-Man writer. Uh, nice to see him back on a book. He's very funny. Joe Madera, where has he been? And the answer is uh, uh, drawing for video games. But uh, it's his first comics book in a long time since Battle Chasers. So it's really good stuff. Uh, it's a little sketchier than I expected. Uh, the art itself. Um, don't you dare make fun of his art. I'm not making fun of Dude, it. Dude, don't you dare. It just, it's a little rougher. I thought it would be a little more polished. Well, screw you, uh, man. But I, I think it's a stylistic choice that I like. Yeah, it it's is a stylistic choice. Uh, you're not listening very well today. No. Uh, so it's a good book. I'd say it's worth a pickup. Uh, Definitely. Nice, uh, fun read. Mm -hmm. Let's move on and talk about Batwoman number three. Uh, this beautifully rendered art in this book. You guys all know this. And I, I gotta say, I've been liking this more and more. A lot of people were a little down on it, uh, knowing that it's just uh, just the artist doing the, the I writing just, as well. I, it's so cool how it goes from being an action comic to kind of like a tripped out DC vertigo feel. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's just a fun ride. Very interesting characters. A lot of fun reveals. It's it's very much a saga, what I really enjoy about it. It's yeah. never just kind of like a one issue. So it's always a, a, a kind of refreshing pickup for me because it's so different from all the other comics. Reminds me of uh, Starman in its day. The way oh, it's sort totally of like, it's, especially the last three or four pages, uh, has a real Tony, reminiscent of Tony Harris's work and sort of the, the early Starman, the way it would... Uh, sort of I think split up the for me, it's like a, a mid uh, fables. I refuse to be insulted by a man with a, a terrible mustache. Hey, uh, this is for Movember, all right? It's for cancer. That's fine. Uh, it's great that you're supporting a charity. I would rather you just donate some money rather than look like an idiot for a month. I would rather look like an idiot for a month. Cool. Uh, keep it going in the December, maybe. It can be dumb December. <laughs> uh, here we are. Just to... because you look nice doesn't mean you are nice. <laughs> True. Guys, that's a lesson you can all take home with you. Uh, unwritten number 31, kicking off the great War of Words saga that is going to make this book bi-weekly, which is very exciting. I am very this excited. is a great book. Um, if you guys aren't reading this, it's uh, legendary. Plus, it's kind of a good jumping on point. Not really. But uh, it also kind of is, because it starts a big kind of saga, so uh, uh, if you haven't picked it up in a while, or you're thinking about getting into it, this is a great time. Uh, it's, we can't say enough great yeah. things about this. The art's amazing. Beautifully written. Uh, uh, fun kind of storyline, you never know what's going on. Uh, just really great vertigo, kind of tripped out fun art. 
Plus, it's got a cat with wings. A cat with wings. And a uh, cool Frankenstein. I know a lot of you guys are out there looking for that. If you're looking, a lot of people talk about how to get what books to give to their friends or, or family, mem- family members they want to get interested in comic books. Unwritten. This comic, Unwritten, is a great, especially starting at the beginning. Um, it's great. It's sort of a, it's a take on sort of a Harry Potter type thing, so it's a good in for also, people. Also, another one is Fear Agent, which just ended last week, and I, amazing. Rick Remender. Yeah. Uh, thank you. That was uh, a, little, a hell of a roll. A little poster. twist of the mustache to Rick Remender for his great work on that. Thank uh, you, Mr. Remender. Uh, and I gotta say, and so that's it. So definitely pick that up. Uh, Pete, uh, just a little update. Pete is slowly aging to be Mr. Magoo, uh, as you can see here. Uh, he will <laughs> oh, be there. Man. And I'm aging you're, to be you're a an old gentleman. Timey, uh, old-timey douchebag. Uh, croupier, yep. That's okay. what it's called. Yep. Uh, hey, guys, thanks a lot. If you're ever in New York City on a Tuesday, we'd love to see you at our live show at the People's Improv Theater. Yep. It's a lot of fun. Uh, one guy did cash in the free Justin beer, so please take advantage of that. Yeah. And for more information about free Justin beer, please check out Pete's website, which doesn't exist. <laughs> or thanks, guys. Or our or our website. We have a new website. Oh.